Hello and welcome to DIY Garage. My name is Matt and today I'm going to show you guys how I went about diagnosing a misfire issue on my 2001 Audi S4. If you missed my most recent video, I showed you a clip of my car with a very unstable idle. I also ran a code reader and it showed me that the second cylinder was misfiring. If you missed that video, click the information card in the top right hand corner of the screen. That will link you straight to the video. In that video, I talked about three major things you want to look out for when you're trying to solve a misfire issue. Those things are the failure of one of three components. The first component you're going to want to look at are the spark plugs. The second component are the ignition coils, and then the third are the ICMs or ignition control modules. This video will show you how to systematically solve the issue by eliminating possible causes. Thanks for watching the video and enjoy. Okay, so the first thing I did when my car started acting funny was plug in this code reader. This is not a VW Audi specific reader, but it gets the job done. As you can see, the car has thrown the P0302 error, which is a misfire in the second cylinder. Now that we know which cylinder is having the problem, we need to get to the ignition coils and the plug. Depending on which cylinder is misfiring, different components will need to be removed from the engine bay to access the cylinder. This V6 engine has two banks of cylinders, bank one through three on the left and bank four through six on the right. Cylinder two is right under here. To get to the cylinder, it requires removing the air intake and filter housing. First, the air duct going into the filter housing must be removed. This can be removed by removing two screws at the front of the engine bay. Then, there are a few clips that have to be unlatched where the top and bottom halves of the filter housing meet. The two ICMs, or ignition control modules, must be unplugged from the top of the air filter housing. Where the housing meets the mass airflow, or MAF sensor, a pipe clamp must be removed. Be careful not to lose the O-ring that seals that connection. Finally, the top half of the housing can be removed. This provides some more clearance to get to the bolts, securing the ignition coils. Now we can get a 10 millimeter socket to remove the bolts on the second cylinder ignition coil. When the bolts are removed, the coil will simply pop off the top of the spark plug. We can now get the coil out of the way and with a 16 millimeter deep socket and extension, the plug can be removed. I removed the plug to start because I wanted to see if there was any obvious indications that the plug was bad. Unfortunately, it didn't look like that was the case, so I reinstalled the plug. Make sure every time you reinstall the plugs, you tighten the plug with a torque wrench, since the plug threads into aluminum. The correct torque spec for this car can be found in the description. Now I check the plug for spark. I use this inline spark plug tester. The tester will make a connection to the ignition coil on one side and the spark plug on the other. This will complete the circuit from the coil to the plug and if both sides of the circuit are working properly, the light bulb in the tester will light up every time current is passed through. Now, to do this, the ICMs must be reconnected. With the ICMs connected, I turn the car back on. And as you can see, the bulb is not lighting up, which confirms the code reader's code, which located the problem to the second cylinder. To make sure the plug tester was working properly, I reinstalled the ignition coil on the second cylinder and plugged the tester in between the coil and plug on the first cylinder. As you can see, the tester is lighting up every time the first cylinder fires. So, it looks like we have a fully functional tester. Since the first cylinder coils are already removed, I decided to swap the plugs on the first and second cylinder. This will allow me to see if the plug is the problem. If the misfire jumps to the first cylinder and the second cylinder fires correctly, we know that it's the plug. Unfortunately, the plug swap didn't seem to help. The second cylinder is still misfiring. So the next part I would want to test are the ignition coils. Similar to the plugs, I swapped the ignition coils for the first and second cylinders. Again, 
If the misfire changes cylinders, we've found the cause of the misfire. To remove the ignition coils, a metal latch can be opened and the coil can be unplugged. With the tester set back up between the coil and the plug, I started the car again. But unfortunately for us, this also doesn't seem to be the problem. The final component that I checked was the ignition control modules on the top of the air filter housing. I'm using the same method as I used for the plugs and the coils, so I swapped the wiring harnesses going into the ICMs. This will switch which ICM controls which bank of cylinders. So theoretically, if one of the ICMs is the cause of the issue, the misfire should jump over to cylinder 5 instead of cylinder 2. With the plug tester hooked up, I again started the engine with the ICM swapped. And there it is! The plug tester blinking indicates that the second cylinder is now firing correctly. That can only mean that the misfire has now jumped over to the other bank of cylinders, specifically cylinder 5. This tells us that we have a faulty ICM. The ICM that was controlling cylinders 1 through 3 will need to be replaced. So, over the years I've seen this issue on all of the forums. I've seen different people having misfiring issues and the three components that we just checked out are almost always the culprits. Um, so, if you have any questions let me know in the comments. If you have any suggestions for other people, things that I did that maybe they shouldn't do, suggestions are always welcome. If this video helped you or you just like the video, give me a thumbs up and if you want more content, subscribe to the channel. In my next video, I will be installing the replacement ICM into the Audi. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time.